For them our blood is a medal merited in eternity. Amen. Murderers against us all. Our men. The verse was from one of his friend Victor's last songs before he was tortured to death. It tormented Alejandro Huron while he watched the tanked-up demonstration on Wednesday, October the 19th, 1983, in Valtiago, the capital of Terreno. The rally had been announced with much pomp and pageantry as a powerful expression of the will of the people. Speakers assured the demonstrators that the people were finally going to defeat the Junta of General Pelaron. Their puffed-up rhetoric amused Alejandro. Shoulder to shoulder, we will force open the door to democracy promised by General Pelaron. Yeah, I'll cross my fingers, dimwits, Huron muttered aloud, a habit acquired from years in solitary confinement. Usually energetic and vibrant with colour, today the large shopping centres on Avenida General Pelaron had the same sullen hue as the Andes Mountains behind the city. Black police buses with armoured windows appeared at the end of the street. Alejandro Huron stepped onto a café terrace. It would normally have been packed with office workers at that time of day, but because of the commotion it was empty. A police tank blocked the road. Years back, Huron had been the much-applauded guitar player in a group named Aconcagua that was famous across the Latin American continent for its protest songs, but he didn't feel inspired to participate in the protest march. The demonstrators were out of their minds. The junta that had governed Terreno for the last ten years wasn't on the brink of collapse, like the speakers said. In the last few months, it had made a few compromises to make it look a bit less dictatorial, but Alejandro felt that was all a smokescreen. The economic crisis and growing popular protest had recently forced General Pelaron to announce he would open the door to democracy at the appropriate moment and in the appropriate way. The opposition, a picturesque collection of splinter groups that were, more often than not, at each other's throats, took to the streets after the general speech as if victory were already within reach. Huron was sure Pelaron made that promise to force his opponents into the open, to have them clubbed in the interest of national peace. He wanted to run, but his eyes held him back. Seeing the Fata Morgana that had endlessly tormented him in his prison cell. There she was, shimmering in the mist which rose from puddles of morning rain. Lucia. The name of his secret love sounded out of place in these circumstances. While Huron's instincts told him to get the hell out of there, he was unable to peel his eyes away from a woman in the crowd. She had knotted a scarf over her mouth, effectively gagging herself, and was carrying a board around her neck that read, Fin a la censura, end censorship. Her ponytail, the oily sheen on her hair, just like Lucia used to wear it. Could this be a sign that I can finally shed my penance? Alejandro cursed. Such were the thoughts of a romantic songster, not of a man who needed to keep a low profile. Out of there. What held him back? He knew bloody well that melancholy was a noxious creation of the ego. After ten years in La Ultima Cena, the prison people called the Last Supper, because supper was the only meal they gave you on the day of your execution, Huron's melancholy had decayed like the rotting jellyfish, he used to inspect on the beach when he was a boy.